inside of us, I believe there is this longing to be able to have togetherness, to be able to have community, to be able to have family. The conflicts get in our way. There is blood on this land. There is blood on this land. It unleashed a flurry of, of anger in the community and hate of crime uh, on, a, on a level where the communities were just lashing out at each other and almost felt like we were on the brink of, of, of open warfare. It was pretty black and white to me, right? I mean, I, I was working for the good guys and I was fighting the bad guys. It was one of the most conflicted situations and complicated situations and hateful situations. I, I worry. I'm looking at the hills out here and the hills have no snow on them. We're in a severe drought and I, I do know that when people feel threatened and they feel like their way of life is, is in peril then their, their survival instincts start kicking in. And, and that gets scary because people do extreme things when they get to that place. It was dangerous. People were killing each other. It was scary. We are scared of each other. You feel like you're being displaced and taken away from some place where, you know, the bones of your ancestors rest all around you. You're a farmer, you get paid once a year when you harvest your crop in the fall. And in the spring, you have no water. You, you just, you're going a year without a paycheck, without a year without any income to your family. Okay, so that happened here. People went bankrupt, people died, people committed suicide. When we do not find the ways to have the conversations that matter, then we we live in hell. <laughs> we choose to live in hell. They will say, I cannot believe that you talk to those Indians. I cannot believe that you talk to those environmentalists. How can you even stand the stench of being in the same room with them? And I'm going, what? My reaction is, is because is you sent me there, and, and what I saw, I had to change my perception. If they're put in the same room, those very same people, and I've seen them do this many, many times in many, many communities, they can't escape the fact that they all exist in that environment, that they all are part of each other. They, they, they seek to like each other. They seek to accept and like each other. They seek to feel like I'm in this group of 60 people and they all know who I am. They all say my name. I am important here. Two great big guys out there, they first started to shake hands with each other and then they said, you know, we grew up together, we played basketball together, we've done all kinds of things all our life, and now all it seems like we do is we hurt each other through the things that we say and the things that we write in the newspapers and stuff. And he said, I think we, I think we need to change that. And um, those two great big guys hugged each other in the center of the circle. It wasn't a dry in the place. And uh, that changed the world in terms of the Klamath Basin. Maybe we weren't uh, as different as we thought we were. And if we weren't as different as we thought we were, then maybe there's some hope. Never underestimate the power of a small group of committed citizens to change the world, because indeed it's the only thing that ever has. That's like the Klamath to me. It's like, that's evidence of that. We've, in some ways, I think, have been able to get to a point where we do recognize each other better. And I think 
if we were left to it, we could probably find a way of learning how to coexist. But I'm not sure if a larger society is willing to allow that.